I think it's important that we talk about tamping. And I think about, I, I th always think about tamping as this, as this very um, common thing or this, this task you need to, need to get done to make good espresso. But I'm always surprised at how much effort or how much information that people put out there about tamping. It seems to be the one thing that people are obsessed with is tamping. And I see these, these hand tamping videos and I see all these people with this show when they, when they tamp. And I always, I always kind of chuckle. I'm like, wow, that's like a, you know, you're really into your tamping and, and which is great. And I'm glad because these are enthusiastic people there that are making espresso, the baristas, uh, especially the third waivers. They're, they're into like showing off, Hey, I can tamp and sh look at my show and I polish and I, well, and I think it's good though. I think it's, I good think it's that great. People are caring about tamping because there was a time when nobody even really knew what tamping was about. And I think there was a market going on, you know, in a time when people were just using like the, the little tamper that was attached to the side of the grinder. There was like a plastic accessory <laughs> that, that, that screwed onto the side or in a lot of times we'll just take it and throw it in the garbage. Yeah. But people just thought, oh, well, I have to do this thing. And, and now I'm making my coffee. Right. And I think that people went from that and realized that tamping could be improved. It can improve the product. And then I think hand tamping was important. In Italy, I'm sure that they hand tamped either way. Well, they, they did, but they also in Italy, they still used, you know, embarrassingly enough, the people still didn't take tamping as seriously. And the reason why they didn't take it seriously is because hand pulled machines, they work so differently than, than electronic machines. A hand pulled machine literally goes from zero to 20 PSI of, of water pressure on that coffee. Then it gradually goes from 20 PSI to 140 PSI. So the coffee has all this time to pre-wet, very gently being pre-wet. So the coffee isn't, you're not, like an electronic machine, if you, if you do a contrast to an electronic machine, and when I say electronic machine, I'm talking about a semi-automatic, it can have a button, it can have a little paddle or a little, little tiny lever on it, not a giant handle. We're talking, you know, anything that's got a pump, basically I say. Um, and what it is is basically you press a button or activate the pump, What's actually happening inside that, inside that handle, that group handle, is it's going from zero to 140 PSI all at once. Bam, it hits the coffee. Now, if that coffee isn't perfectly flat, perfectly evenly packed, at a, because you know, water waters goes to the path of least resistance. If you look at a stream, it's very simple math. You look at it, coffee or water's not gonna go around or through a rock, it's gonna go around a rock. So if it can go to the side of the of the puck, of the, your packed puck, if it's not packed correctly, or if the coffee's, you know, tilted, or if it's packed more or unevenly, you know, or the not, not enough pressure, you end up with this this uh, this under extracted on one side of your puck and totally over extracted on the other side, which of course takes out some some of the great, you know, great flavors out of the coffee. So I think that, that the electronic machines, when they kind of came into their own, or the pump machines in the 60s, you know, tamping really wasn't taken seriously because the hand pull machines solved the problem. They never really had a tamping problem. Mm -hmm. so, so the grinders, manufacturers started saying, well, we'll put this little thing in there so you can kind of touch it. Um, and then of course, going forward, um, well, what you're doing is just flattening it. You're just kind of flattening. But you weren't packing it. Not really. But then at some point, the specialty coffee industry decided that let's actually make a specific amount of pressure. Let's right. call it 35 pounds. And so then they said, let's actually make a guideline right. for how hard it needs to be pressed and make sure that it's even. And now with that, add that to the process. And now this is going to make the right cup of coffee. Right. Because they, again, it's going zero to 140 PSI. So we want to, Evenly extract well, they were, even they were solving amount. a problem solving based a problem. on a different kind of machine right. and the way it worked. Right. And it you know it reminds me of a super automatic because I know during the time when you used to service a lot of these right. that when you would open up the whole front end of it, you saw this enormous tamper that tamped at whatever pressure. I think you could adjust it. You could. You could actually type in what you wanted. Yep. And so it needed that. Yep. It needed that to make it work. To make it work. Whereas hand pulled machines didn't need that because everything was kind of done in a simple way. 
Well, and I don't want to discount because, you know, here's the thing. The, the more evenly and the more consistently you tamp, um, even with the hand pull machine, even, you've just taken it to another level of quality. So, so we, we decided, I think that, I think that was my big inspiration um, was I imported a few of these, these tamping devices with handles on them from Italy. There was a company over there making them. Um, they were super high maintenance. I couldn't get replacement parts. They were very expensive. Um, but they did solve a similar, pro they solved the problem. And I was like, oh, these are really cool. I sold a few of them. My customer's like, these are great. I wish they didn't break so much. And I wish that they weren't so, so expensive. Um, and I was like, yeah, I think if I made these, I, this would really improve the already, you know, existing problem that we have. So what we did is we started building these auto tamps. Uh, I think 2004 is when I started building my first ones. And, uh, and I was really excited. I really was, I was surprised that we didn't sell more in the beginning that we did. Um, and I think what the misinformation was is that people are like, yeah, I can hand tamp. I'm awesome at it. I don't need that. I don't need that machine or I don't need that, that hand pulled device to, uh, to tamp. I don't need that. Uh, I'm, I really like to show off and like to, cause that auto, you know, tamping started becoming kind of an art, like people like tamping and hitting. And, but what I think that people didn't realize, and I would show some of my customers or our customers, I would say, okay, you think you're an awesome tamper. I'm not going to say you're not. Let's, uh, let's put a bathroom scale or uh, some type of a scale, have you tamp on it. And then you tell me if you think you were totally consistent. And when they would, and I would show them. Yeah, say, like hey, tamp like 10 times in a row and yep. see at what pressure you were every time. And they think that they're perfect, but they're not. So that really proved to me again and again that the auto tamp made more sense. Um, it's well, gonna... and it was an answer to solving an issue of consistency. Exactly. And a lot of the people that buy them are concerned about that. Well, here's the other big one, and this is the big one that the auto tamp, I think, solves the biggest problem, is work-related repetitive injury. That is the number one thing that people would ask me. They'd say, you know, uh, do you have anything that like, you know, any device before I even made an auto tamp or even saw them, uh, even the Italian one, I go, I, do you have anything that like makes this easier? My elbow's killing me, my shoulder's killing me. Um, and I never really thought about it, but you know, you do anything a thousand times a day, you're gonna have an issue eventually. Mm -hmm. So the auto tamp solved that. Um, now it's much easier, there's a gear in it. You're, of course, you've reduced the amount of pressure it takes, and this is a natural movement. This, and doing this whole twisting and putting your shoulder and getting up on the counter, that's not a natural movement per se. So I thought it was uh, it solved two problems. One is consistency of coffee, two was repetitive injury movement. Um, and I don't think that we're losing, when you put, when I see an auto tamp in, in use in a cafe, I think it's kind of cool. If you're hand pulling this, this device down, it looks kind of cool. I don't think there's any romance loss um, but I do see people, less people, um, adopting it right off the bat. They're not so prone. They're like, oh, I'm going to hand tap. I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, cool. Use this for a week and let me know what you think. And, and nine times out of 10, they'll say, I, I got to have the auto tamp. Um, and a lot of the, the customers we sold them to, um, we sell one, like let, let's say they, they have a chain of five different, uh, cafes. We sell one of them to them. Um, they go, we're going to see in one location how, what it's like. Um, they always have to have them in every every location and what's even funnier is when if something you know like they lose one or they break one or whatever you know if it fails like I, i've had them like lose the handle or lose the puck and i'm like man you know it's not the end of the world you can hand tamp right and they go no i can't live without it you know so um and some of the you know the extreme high volume uh drive throughs well, it's a must what i would say i think that you know in general you have all different kinds of people doing different kinds of coffee different volume and uh, I think that some people do rely on that. That's right. And it wouldn't matter either way. They're, they need that consistency. They have 12 different employees at different times of the day, and they don't want to have to wonder if it's consistent. Whereas with an auto tamp, you don't have to have that question. You don't. And I think that it's, uh, it's important to always point out that consistency is important no matter what you're doing. Um, and being consistent in a way that still puts on a show. So an auto tamp, you're not losing the show. So, you know, people don't have to be threatened by that. Um, I'm always like, oh, I'm a hand tamper. I will never auto tamp. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you just gotta try it. <laughs> you know, I was like, just try it. And they go, oh, this is great. You know, use it for a, a few hours. And they go, oh, I get it. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't be afraid of change. And that's what's exciting about the millennials and the 30s and the 40 year olds that are in the coffee industry, the third waivers. I'm like, you guys are open to everything. They seem to be uh, open to, to new things. 
um, and open to different ways of doing things and being more consistent and being more, you look at it as a craft. So, well, and it's still certainly a natural process. I right. mean, it's not automated. No. It's not something that requires electronics. No, and I think the Autotamp, we, we, we came up with that idea or that name um, is probably like an, a it's stretch. Still, it's still just a hand process. It's still a manual lever. So it's it's a stretch when we called it Autotamp. Um, certainly more automatic than doing this. Mm -hmm. So so that's why I think we come up with it. Mm -hmm.